Now, next here in uh, chapter five, uh, remember we talked about first uh, Juron, and then we talked about uh, Shaihort, uh, and then here we're talking about this Kaizen. Now, Kaizen is a philosophy of never-ending improvement. So, uh, maybe some of you have seen Ahmed Shigiri, uh, uh, one of the episodes about Japan, and he talked about the Kaizen in the Japanese culture. And the Japanese, uh, they believe that the best and the most lasting change come from gradual improvement. So they believe that, uh, you know, if, you know, the best way to improve is like small increments, you know, uh, you know, little at a time. And they use an analogy that they believe that there is a better to take frequent small doses of medicine than to take one large dose. So this is uh, from the Japanese culture. And the Kaizen technique, uh, while it's a Japanese philosophy that defines management role in continuously encouraging and implementing small improvements involving everyone. And it focuses on uh, simplification by breaking the complex task into smaller tasks. So if you have one thing that is very complex, you take it, you break it into small parts, and then you start to take each small part at a time. Continuous improvement in small increments make the process more efficient, controllable, and adaptable. So if you've got, let's say, uh, if we're talking about, let's say, uh, uh, let's, uh, uh, you know, in a hotel, uh, in a hotel, uh, maybe, uh, you know, you've got your housing, uh, your uh, housekeeping department, and uh, inside the hotel, they need to fix the rooms every day, right? So here, how do they fix the room? They walk into the room, and then they will spend, let's say, 30 minutes to fix the room. Now, this is a process. So in order to improve it, we will need to make the, take the room into small parts. So maybe today we can improve just the, how we clean you know, the balcony. And then next time we improve cleaning uh, you know, the bathroom. And then next we improve cleaning the bed. And next we improve cleaning the floor. You see, so you take it step by step and you take those increments and this make it more uh, efficient, controllable, and you can also adapt. And does not rely on more uh, expensive or sophisticated equipment or techniques. So that's the Kaizen. So Kaizen, it's continuous improvement and uh, it's a you know, small part at a time. A uh, company continually strive to be better through learning and problem solving and you, because we can never achieve perfection, we must always evaluate our performance and take measures to improve it. Now, Kaizen Improvement focuses on the use of value-added, non-value-added work activities. So, they also weigh not only the value-added, you know what's value-added? Value added, it means you make your uh, business uh, more valuable. Let's say uh, you clean the room, then that's value, right? Now, if you, uh, let's say, maybe if you clean the balcony, maybe that's not big value for the customer. Maybe it's a big value for the customer. So they don't care whether this is a value or big value or small value or no value. They care about improvements. So how can we be better? And refers to the seven classes of waste, overproduction, delay, transportation, processing, inventory, wasted motion, and defective parts. So this is uh, what they mean is, how can, we, uh, how can we not overproduce? Do you know what we mean by overproduce? You don't want to produce more than you will sell. You see, remember in the pizza business, uh, you come in, you order a pizza, they make a pizza for you. There's another b business where they make a lot of pizzas and then you come and you take whatever is available. Now here, uh, maybe on the second example, there is more chance for overproduction. So you produce more than customers want. Or maybe delay, where customers come and they have to wait a lot because your uh, process is slow maybe. The idea of transportation. Transportation is how can we produce the product and close to the customer? So remember, the Toyota, they decided to go to, uh, they go to the US and produce cars there so that they are closer to the customer. They go to Europe and produce cars there so they're closer to the customer. So this idea of transportation saving. The idea of processing, how can we process faster? Inventory, do we want large inventory or small inventory or just enough? The idea of just enough inventory, that's also part of this guy's in, uh, 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 principles. And then we've got the wasted motion. Uh, you don't want to waste motion. You don't want to do things that are not necessarily. So how can you uh, save the energy or power? And then you've got the idea of uh, having less defective parts. Do you know what we mean by defective parts? 
You don't want to produce a car that is broken. You don't want to make a pizza that's going to be uh, wasted or not accepted by the customer. You don't want, you want to do it right from the first time. Principles of motion study and the use of cell technology. So, so here we've got principles of uh, material handling and the use of one piece flow. So, uh, so here with the motion study, uh, you know, uh, remember on an assembly line, you know, you, you put here a car, which is just the iron or the body, and then you start to add the different components until at the end you have a car that is ready. Now, this is like the motion of the production. So you want this to be very smooth, right? Uh, principle of material handling and use of one uh, piece flow is that you make one car at a time. You don't want to make, let's say, five cars and you fix them and then, you see, the idea of uh, one at a time. And then documentation, you standardize this operation procedures. So these are some of the things that it focuses on. We've got the 5S for uh, workplace uh, organization. It's a housekeeping technique used to establish and maintain a productive quality environment in an organization. Do you know what's the 5S? No. We will see it in the next slide. Um, visual management by meaning of visual displays that everyone in the plant can use to better communicate. Um, in the Japanese, uh, or in the Kaizen uh, uh, principle, uh, they believe that uh, everything that we do, uh, we share it in a visual format so everyone can see. So maybe if you go to the plant, maybe you will see there, you know, how many cars are being produced now. Uh, <coughs> the idea is when everyone knows where we are, this becomes better communication. So they always have a posting on the wall that show our project plan. Uh, there's another posting on the wall which says our performance today or yesterday, or how many we sold, or how many we produced, or how many we fixed, or how many uh, are under process, or how many orders. So this information, when it is public for everyone to see, this becomes better communication, this visual management. And then they have the just-in-time principle. Do you know what's the just-in-time in principle? Just-in-time principle is to produce only the units in the right quantities at the right time and with the right resources. So you don't overproduce, you don't underproduce. You only produce as needed. Okay. Remember one of the examples like Dell Company? Dell Company, you go online and you order a Dell computer and they make it for you. They don't have a lot of laptops available waiting for customers to they come and buy. No. You know, they, do, they want to have like a zero inventory. Not zero inventory, it's just right. You know, the level of inventory that is necessarily for their work to work smooth. And then this Pokayoka, it is you prevent or detect errors. Don't want errors. And then number here, number 10 is the team dynamics. Include problem solving, communication, skills, and conflict resolutions. So here, how can we make our teams to be able to communicate well and have less problems? Are you guys okay with these 10 steps or uh, you know, 10 points of what Kaizen Improvements focuses on? Now let's go and see the 5S. The 5S housekeeping. Now here, uh, these are all, uh, starts with an S, the uh, C-Rai, C-Ton, C-So, uh, C-Ki-Ti-So, uh, and then uh, shi ti so -ka. Now these, uh, what they mean is this yeah, tidiness, uh, it means you are tight, uh, you are uh, clean, you throw away all rubbish, so you don't keep up things that you don't need, just clean them out. You're tight. Orderliness, you set everything in the proper place. So you know, this is first, second, third, you always keep things in the proper place. So this is like you're organized. Uh, cleanliness, so you keep clean. So, and then standardization, uh, that's when uh, maintaining clean lists, standardization of the way of maintenance, uh, clean lists. And then your discipline, uh, make it a way of life, uh, self-discipline. So, so these are five as house. Uh, keeping. Are you guys okay with these? And then the TQM principles from the Japanese, we've got the 3K principle, the Kimerite uh, Koto, and the Kimerite. No, you don't have to remember. These are like Japanese words. Okay. Now, this is what they mean is that this is uh, what has been decided, uh, what must be followed, and a per standard. 
So uh, you just want to make sure that uh, uh, you know uh, you follow the standard and you uh, that is been agreed on. Okay, so so we agreed on doing this, so we just follow it, and it is our standard. So that's the Japanese uh, uh, principle three K method. Now here we've got the idea of reengineering. Do you guys know what's reengineering? The reengineering principle, according to this guy uh, Hammer and James uh, Champe, reengineering is a fundamental rethinking and radical, big and important design of business process to achieve dramatic, great, sudden, exciting, and impressive improvement in critical measures of performance. Did you understand what's reengineering? Reengineering is you see the process, let's say the process of ordering or the process of fixing a room, and then you do a full uh, change. Okay, why do you do this full change? In order to improve this uh, process. So we call that reengineering. You hear some companies they want to do reengineering, it means they want to change the way we do things. And then many practitioners believe TQM is associated with only incremental happening, gradual improvement. But you know, some people, uh, you know, consider you know, uh, reengineering becomes an important uh, part. Uh, we've got the six sigma method. Do you know what's a six sigma? Have so you heard of sigma? It's, five things and it's six sigma, yeah. Yes. But it's five uh, points. Five what? Points. No. Mm -hmm. There are six, uh, five sigma, uh, this is uh, six sigma. Now, uh, six sigma, it's a, it's a statistics uh, idea. Let's do the six sigma here. Do you guys remember in, uh, do you remember in uh, statistics this uh, standard deviation uh, and uh, normal distribution? Now, you remember here you have the mean, and the mean is zero. And then here we have uh, you know negative one, uh, negative two, uh, negative three, and here we've got one, uh, two, three. So this is two, one. Okay. Now remember the area between this and this. Do you remember this was like sixty-four percent. Okay. So this a this uh, space, this area here, this is one sigma. Okay. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six sigma. And remember the area between these, uh, how much? This is 99.999. You know, something like that, right? So this idea of uh, uh, of making sure that uh, a Six Sigma company, it's a company where, uh, you know, only six out of a million or a billion uh, units of production is uh, defected. So, and they try to make it, you know, it's a smaller and smaller, more accurate. And uh, that becomes, that's the Six Sigma method. And Sigma is a Greek symbol, statistical measurement of a discipline, a process of spreading things over a wide area or uh, different directions called standard deviation. Are you guys okay with this uh, idea of Six Sigma? Okay. Now, methodology, uh, we still have two slides only. Let's see. Methodology of Six uh, Sigma uh, use those factors with an essential for improving both quality of process and generating profits. So you want to produce more better quality, this way you can have more profits. And the Six Sigma methodology consists of five phases. Five phases, Well, do you understand where is the Six? Yeah, yeah, the Six Sigma is, comes yeah. from here, while well, this is the, just the methodology. So a Sigma is a standard deviation on here. Okay, let me remove this. Uh, so, uh, number one, you want to define the project, the goal, the deliverables, internal, external customers. You want to measure current process. You analyze it, you improve it, you control it. You now it goes back to a very similar principle. Uh, you define, you know, check almost, or analyze, improve, and then control. And the problems, there are some problems associated with the Six Sigma methodology that it would be very difficult and very cost effective for small businesses to develop required infrastructure. So in order to have Six Sigma in a small business, it's expensive, difficult. Medium-sized businesses would have also difficulty paying the high cost uh, to train people. And one of the good examples is this electric, uh, General Electric. They spend $2 billion to develop their infrastructure so that they can have a full Six Sigma. So all of their production are within the range of uh, uh, standard uh, uh, Six Sigma. 
Are you guys okay? Any questions? All right, so that's the end of the chapter.